In fact, you know, by the way, that was Joseph Albert's definition of a work of art. A work of art is measured in the distance between the physical fact and the psychic effect. As a young artist, I had worked almost entirely from photographs when I was in high school, and that's what I like to do. And so I drew from photographs, and then my major influ inf influence was probably illustration and comics. And the minute I got to college was my first real experience of uh, working from the model. And that was the thing that sort of changed my life. That, that experience of working from life, especially from a human being, portrait or new, got into my, under my skin and, and in a way that it's very hard for me to explain why that matters to me so much, but it was, it was an experience of intense challenge and also intense pleasure to do that. Like it was exciting in the grand as well. You know, what is the relationship of a, an artistic or creative vocation to faith, you know, like, because they have all kinds of funny intersections and even mirror each other in strange ways in the sense that they are uh, deeply involved in kinds of affirmation. They celebrate the existence in some way. Uh, and, they're, and they're oriented towards a kind of future in the sense of what you will do, what you will make. They're, I mean, there's something at stake in an artistic vocation. And there's clearly something at stake if you're a person of faith. And yet they also, there's dissonances. There's things that uh, people within a, uh, uh, a kind of religious community have trouble with in the temperament and persona of artists. I mean, there's always the suspicion of vanity. There's always the suspicion of, uh, of uh, you know, some kind of, license or, or equivocal morality there, you know. I don't think that's what artists experience, but I think that's what folks suspect, you know. And, uh, and the other fun, final thing that's really tough, and maybe you guys know more about this than I do, is the essence of an artistic vocation is a commitment to a very radical kind of individualism. It's, it's you want to become, as an artist, something incommensurable with any other precedent. You want to be unique. And that's not a primary value in a religious community. You know, it, I, I don't know that you'd be actively against it, but you would, you would be suspicious of it on many grounds, right? Just on the grounds of humility, if nothing else. I think if I have to declare, I'm a kind of an agnostic. Although, everything in my temperament leads me to a, a kind of desire to affirm, affirm the beauty of this world as a reflection of some greater consciousness, something bigger. But I don't think there's necessarily something better and more worthwhile beyond this life. I, I actually, I like some of the radicalism implicit in, in Jesus' originary teaching which is heaven is right here and right now is a condition of the heart, if you are open to it. It's a, it's a, heaven is, a, is an eternal present that is at hand, not delayed, not contingent on something, but right here. Uh, and, uh, and I don't think that's actually very far from the way most artists lead their lives. I think that's, that's what an artistic bet looks like. Right now, right here, every day, you know, has the distinct possibility of a kind of epiphany. And that epiphany is the wholeness, the beauty, the, the, the majesty of experience right there. I don't think necessarily you start with a belief like that that then becomes a f confirmed in the art. I think it's the other way around. I think your art leads you to that. Like the more you work as an artist, the more you, you adopt certain principles, like 
you know, principles that we share are, are that at any point something very gr terrific could happen in a painting if you stay solidly in the moment of the work and you commit to it in a completely open way uh, without premeditation, uh, uh, without uh, manipulation. You just, you go for it. Uh, you also, if you have, share a kind of a, an artistic commitment like we do, believe that there, there is a kind of internal integrity in the best work where certain premises or certain choices lead you to make other very hard and demanding choices. Like for instance, working on an alla prima painting, saying it's got to happen in this moment of response. It can't be retouched, revisited, or manipulated. Now that's very radical, and why any lay person would care about that, I don't know. And yet, for some reason, it's very resonant in a life lived to say, if you, if you truly live your own principles, you start treating everything with a kind of infinite respect. You're engaged. You're there. You're present for what you're doing, and you're present for those people that you're interacting with, whoever they are and wherever you find them. Art, for me, becomes a place where sensation gets transformed into uh, feeling through the things that one makes, what I make, uh, which are uh, specifically paintings and drawings. Uh, but, the, and, and the content, or the, the, the uh, motifs in those paintings and drawings tend to be you know, pretty predictably things in the world, most, most prominently people, figures. But I, th I tend to think the content of the work, uh, as apart from the, uh, the inspiration, is a whole set of sensations in which those, those people, those places, those objects are revealed. And that takes me to categories like touch and space, light, atmosphere. So for me, if an art is, art is a place where experience is reconstituted or made or made concrete, though that's the specific uh, uh, way I would define it for myself. That's where I go, which would be distinct from an architect or a musician, perhaps, or a dancer. I don't think they would define it in exactly the same way. But I imagine they would assent to the large terms that I'm using. I, I think I do it uh, because I really need to do it. Uh, I, I, uh, I think the attraction to make art has always been deeply sensual to me. Like there's, there's some way of, uh, of realizing what I find beautiful, what I find erotic, what I find compelling, that I can only really do uh, in painting. Which is ironic for me to say because I love to talk and I'm very much a creature of, of verbal and written language. But finally there's something that I can't get at any other way except through the equivalence of, of painting, of, of a painted or drawn image. How the Greeks imagined that when you were looking at something, your eye sent out these jellied fingers that came from your eye and moved through the ether of the air. And that sight was as much a, a, a matter of touching and embracing the thing you looked at as seeing it as on a screen. It's ironic because the primary trope of vision that we, we live with is the world seen on a screen, seen projected as a flickering mirage. The Greeks didn't think that that was a, a primary uh, metaphor for vision. They saw it as touch. The eyes were touching the world they beheld and embracing it in some way and reconstituting it as this fully fleshed out sculptural, you know, viscerally understood thing. That was it. I don't get to do that in any other of my experiences. You know, uh, 
Uh, I don't get to embrace the world in that way. It's just not part of the, the job description. But art, it is. It's indispensable. And I have, uh, certainly all my adult life, I have had a, a hunger for that experience that I have to keep feeding. It, it doesn't go away.